Okay, to finish off 4.9, we're just going to take a look at a couple more examples, um, just to get a couple more examples into your notes and give you some practice. Okay, um, so you can pause the video and try these problems, but um, they're worded a little differently, but I'll just explain the wording and then you can try them. So find f of x if f prime of x is equal to 3e to the 2x plus 5 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so this is not telling you to take a derivative, it's telling you to take an antiderivative. We already have f prime and we want to get back to f. So basically this is a fancy way of just asking what is the antiderivative. Okay, so you can use the table if you like, or you can try to think of what do I take the derivative of to get that function. Okay, so pause the video and see if you can find this antiderivative. Okay, so what is the antiderivative? Well, our sum rule says that I do each one of these sum portions or separately. Constant multiplier rule says that the 3 just sits there. What is the antiderivative e to the 2x? Well, it's e to the 2x. And then to counterbalance that 2, I'm going to put a 1 half. Okay. Now, you can always check your work by just taking the derivative of this. When you take the derivative of 3 halves e to the 2x, you're going to get right back to where I started. Okay, so you take the derivative and you get right back to there. Okay, the right hand side, all right, the 5 is just a constant, it's just going to sit there. And the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is arctangent. Okay, and then of course we need that plus c. So 3 halves e to the 2x plus 5 arctangent of x plus c. Okay. <coughs> All right, try part b. Again, pause the video, see if you can find this antiderivative. And again, uh, I recommend before unpausing it, check your answer, take the derivative, see if it goes right back to where it started. Okay, so uh, the antiderivative 5 cosine of x. 5 is just going to sit there, sine of x, okay, and then a pretty common mistake on this is to go plus well, 4 divided by 2, 2 cosine of 2x, okay, um, so you might think, oh yeah, the uh, antiderivative of sine of x is cosine of x, but check your work. If you check this, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you would get back to negative 4 sine of 2x. I don't want that negative. So to counterbalance that, I'm just going to put a negative here. And now when you check, you're going to get negative negative 4, cosine, or 4 sine of 2x, okay? which is going to go back to positive 4 sine of 2x, and it's going to match up. Okay. All right, so let's look at another example with an extra portion to it. So this time, not only did I remember, nope, I didn't, plus C. So I would have lost some points there. Okay. So again, always need that plus C. All right, so in part C here, actually, um, that plus C is going to be very important. This time, I know what the derivative is, and I know that F of 1 is equal to 10. This is called an initial or boundary condition. Okay, and it helps you find C. Okay. All right, but the first thing I need to do is find an antiderivative. Now, how do I find the antiderivative of this? It's a product. If you remember from one of our previous parts, what I want to do is simplify this. Basically, I want to distribute this square root of x, and the square root of x is x to the half. I'm going to write it as x to the half because I'm going to use power rules. So I'm going to distribute that, and I'm going to get 6x to the half, okay, plus 5x times x to the half. Power rule says I should, or uh, laws of exponents say that I should add those two powers together. So 5x to the 3 halves. Okay. So my antiderivative is the 6 just sits there, 
I, I add one to the power, so one half plus one is three halves. I divide by the new higher power. Now, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal. Okay. The five is just gonna sit here on the right-hand side. I'm gonna add one to the power, five halves, and divide by that new higher power, which is, again, multiplying by a reciprocal, plus C. And that plus C is important on this problem. Okay, let's clean this up. Six times two thirds is four, X to the three halves. Five divided by five over here cancels and we get two X to the five halves plus C. Okay. All right, now because this gave me some extra information that F of one is equal to 10, I can figure out what that plus C has to be, okay? Namely, I can figure out that F of one is going to be four times one to the three halves plus two times one to the five halves plus C, okay? That's what my function that I found says. And then the equation says that this should be equal to 10, all right? Which means that I should be able to solve this for C. So we get four plus two plus C is equal to 10. So C is equal to four, right? <coughs> all right. So in general, in general, um, our function is four X to the three halves plus two X to the five halves plus C. But for this particular uh, initial condition given, that C has to be four, okay? All right, I'll race. Okay, all right, let's look at one last example. And this is pretty much where we started 4.9 way back in part one, okay, with a motion problem, okay? So a ball is thrown upward from the edge of a 64 foot tall cliff with an initial speed of 48 feet per second. Find its height above the ground t seconds later. Okay, um, and then usually these problems are followed up by like when does it hit the ground and how fast is it going when it hits the ground, things like that. But if you can uh, do this first part, you can find all those things. Okay, so here's a picture of this we've got a 64 foot tall cliff, throwing the ball upwards at 48 feet per second. Okay. It's gonna come down here, hit the ground eventually we want a height function or a position function for this uh, ball, okay? All right, so like I was saying in that first part, when we first started 4.9, when you throw that ball in the air, a position function does, doesn't like appear next to it, okay? Instead, what we need to do is start with acceleration, okay? When you throw something in the air, the only acceleration working on it is gravity, okay? And gravity is negative 32 feet per second squared, okay? Um, usually on a problem, I would give that to you, or my math, I usually will tell that to you. Um, if you take in physics, you'll recognize that value. If we're working in uh, metric, that value is negative 9.8 meters per second, okay? Um, so that's just a known constant. Um, the negative is just saying that acceleration is working downwards, okay? All right, so now I can get to velocity. So how do I get to velocity? Well, I take the antiderivative of acceleration. Okay, so what is the antiderivative of negative 32? Well, the antiderivative of a constant is the constant times t, so negative 32t plus c. Okay. So we get that our velocity function is negative 32t plus c, okay? So we can figure out what the c is by our initial condition. The velocity at time zero, well, according to this function, is negative 32 times zero plus c. According to our picture and thinking about the original problem, when I first throw the ball, it's going 48 feet per second, okay? So negative 32 times zero just cancels, and we get c is equal to 48 feet per second. 
So our velocity function is negative 32t. Instead of plus c in general, for this problem, it's going to be plus 48. Okay, um, So that's the initial speed of the ball. Okay. All right, so this is the velocity function. Now I want to go to position or height. And how do I go from velocity to height? Well, I would take another antiderivative. So I take the antiderivative of negative 32t plus 48dt. Okay. Just for practice, see if you guys can figure out this antiderivative and figure out what the constant has to be. Okay, so hopefully you tried that yourself. If you didn't, it's not too late. Pause the video and try it yourself, okay? Um, uh, it's always good to practice these things. So how do I find the antiderivative of negative 32? T, well, I add one to the power, T squared. I divide by that new higher power. A lot of times I'll do that first. I'll add the, the one to the power, then I'll divide that constant. Negative 32 divided by two is negative 16, right? The antiderivative of 48 is 48T. Okay, and then plus another constant. I already used c in this problem. If you used it when you did this, that's all right. Uh, but technically, since I use c, I should switch to a d or an e or an f or something like that. All right, how do I find that? Well, at time zero, I can plug that in. Our position function would just give us c or d, whatever variable you used, okay? And how high above the ground is it at time zero? Well, it hasn't moved at all, so it's gonna be 64 feet above the ground. So our position function is negative 16t squared plus 48t plus 64. Okay. All right, <laughs> so um, if you've ever taken physics before, you'll recognize these types of problems. If you haven't and you have to take it, you're gonna see these problems. And you are a great benefit that you've already learned antiderivatives. Um, so a personal thing is when I took physics, I took it before I took calculus. Um, so I took it in my uh, junior year of uh, high school, first time I took uh, physics class. And we didn't know any calculus, so we couldn't do these problems with antiderivatives. And instead of doing it this way, which is much easier in the long run, I just had to memorize this formula, uh, negative one half gt squared, plus v naught t plus s naught, okay? And um, along with this formula, I had to memorize lots of formulas because I didn't know calculus when I first took physics. Um, so knowing how to do antiderivatives can really help you out when you get to physics. It'll save you a lot of uh, memorization and you can set up your problems so much cleaner and so much nicer rather than saying they're memorizing uh, 50 different formulas, okay? So very, very powerful example here. Um, so at this point, we finished 4.9. Uh, we've actually finished chapter four. Uh, so make sure you uh, ask any questions through email or ask them in the virtual office hours or post them in the comments and uh, we'll try to answer them as soon as possible.